Hey guys, happy Thursday, December 13th, somehow halfway through almost December already, almost to 2019, which is nuts, crazy. Um, hopefully all of you guys are surviving the holiday craziness between Thanksgiving and the end of the year. It's always nuts. Um, hopefully good nuts. Um, Christmas shopping, holiday shopping, happy Hanukkah. I think it's over now, but um, all that good stuff. Hopefully you're having fun in the craziness. Uh, so I got a few, just a few things today. Only one um, comment in the group. I had one actually, well, a couple people uh, I've been working with in the studio on something. So I'm going to chat about that. And then I have a little feedback I want to request from you guys. But we're going to start with something Mary posted on uh, her and her happy hour. She was talking about how um, she's only getting a couple people in one of her classes. And it's not the time because somebody else who teaches a similar time slot is getting people in there. Or I think you said she subbed for you or so something like that. So um, here's my suggestion there. First of all, um, I've heard people say, many people say, that there's never, there's no such thing as a bad time slot. If you're a good instructor, you will get people there. Um, now, there's some caveats to that because if you're brand new and you have, you know, an 8 p.m. time slot or something that not a lot of people come to, it's hard to get people to get to know you, right? So that's always the thing. People have to know you and like you and then they'll come find you. Uh, so Mary, I know that you're relatively new, um, still kind of getting your people, right? So what I would suggest is definitely, you mentioned going to check out that instructor who's getting a lot of people. Definitely do that. Go ride with her um, or him and see how they get people in their class. What do they do differently from you? What do they, how do they engage people, right? Um, and see, stick around after class and come a little early. See how they engage people before and after class because that's important too. Um, another thing that's actually cool that we do, and if your studio or your gym allows you, it can be huge. Do a dual ride with a popular instructor. So if they they suggest you, so if you're riding with another instructor, even if you just go in their ride and they call you out and say, hey, check out Mary. She teaches XYZ times. She's awesome. That goes a really long way because everyone who has their, their person that they go to and they trust, if that person suggests someone else to them, it means that you know, that's, that's a good person. They wouldn't, they wouldn't say that otherwise. So see if you can get either ride with that woman and see if she'll, you know, suggest people go to try your class or see if you can do a dual ride, two bikes up in the front and you guys ride together. So people will come because she's there, but then they'll see you and they'll get really excited and they'll, you know, want to go to your class. Also, it's just really fun to do a dual ride. Um, you might have to take, you know, half the class pay to get, um, your manager to, to want to do it so they don't have to pay two instructors, but it will get you some great exposure and it might end up getting some new people to come see your class. So try that. Um, try, you know, like I said, riding with her and, and seeing if she'll point people to your class, things like that. Um, but a lot of times it's just time. You know, people will come, but it takes a really long time as a new instructor to build a base. I'm talking like years. So stay with it. It'll be fine. I'm sure there's nothing that you're doing wrong. It's just they have to find you. So let me know how that's going, um, especially in the new year. I think if you try one of those tactics, maybe it'll bring some new people to you. Um, <clears throat> so I want to talk about connecting with riders because I, um, I mentioned a couple weeks ago um, I was talking about robot voice. So we've been training um, some new instructors. And they get up there and they're very, you know, they're nervous, so they go into robot voice. And, and that's when, you know, you get very methodical about what you're saying and telling people exactly what to do and you lose your personality, right? You guys know exactly what I'm talking about. When you get nervous, the personality goes out the window because you're not comfortable enough and confident enough to share that with people. That connection is so important because people have to be able to connect with you on some sort of personality level to like you enough to come back to your class, right? If you're just a robot, then they might as well just go home and get on a Peloton bike and, and do that, right? We come, they come for that connection. They come for that experience. So a couple things you can do to build that connection with riders. I always tell stories. 
So you got to find the right point because you don't want to be talking throughout the whole class, but especially at the beginning of class when people are getting set up, you know, I'm going around, I'm helping them, I'm introducing myself, but I'm also probably chatting like I was talking about my Iceland trip. I talked about the fact that I ate whale and I'm still kind of grossed out by that, but I did. And, you know, people were asking me questions and I was getting to know them. And then people were asking me about, you know, you know, telling me they went to Iceland too. Did I do this? Did I do that? And we're building that connection before the ride even started. So they're trusting me, they're getting to know me. And it's really like so crucial. Like think about me and you, right? You guys probably came into this group, didn't know me at all. Who's this chick? Like what, what is she, why can she help me? If I strictly came on here and just read like facts to you, and read stats to you every time and you didn't see my face you didn't see my dog walking behind me you didn't get to know me as a person I don't think you would really trust anything I had to say because why wouldn't you then just go and Google all these things right you can find all this stuff online it's the connection that we crave as humans we want that same thing in your classes so tell stories at the right times before and after class maybe somewhere it fits into your class you don't want to be talking too long but you can give them a little something um, make eye contact with people so a lot of you probably ride often with the lights dimmed or off right i think that is a very common thing with a spin class and that's fine that's great people like that but not the whole class so the lights shouldn't be completely blacked out your entire class you want to be able to see people and make eye contact with them and engage with them if they can't make that eye contact connection with you once in a while they're not going to feel like they're in it with you so once in a while, you know, let the lights come up a little bit and make that eye contact. It really goes a long way. Um, and it takes, again, this is all going to take some confidence and it's going to be a little bit uncomfortable when you start doing it, but it will, I promise you, make those connections. Um, walking around at the beginning and the end of class, I talk about this all the time, getting some names, getting to know people, um, helping them clip in, but also maybe starting conversation, especially if they're newer. Hey, how'd you hear about us? I'm so happy you're here. I'm Kate. Like, let's let's get you set up. Um, have you done spin before? You know, little conversations like that. People like to be noticed. They like to be taking feeling that they're taken care of, right? So we want to give that to them um, and learn their names. And and then you can call out their names during class when you have a hard effort. Oh, some people love that. They like need that extra burst of energy. Some people don't. So you'll have to you know see if if they tell you afterwards. Like I you know, I don't like it when you call me out, then you don't ever do that again. But some people, I have people in my class who when I say their name, I can see them push 10 times harder. And then at the end of the class, they're like, oh, that was amazing, you know? So pick and choose, try different things. You'll find your, your, your little niches, but it is a lot of that connection piece that's important. Um, and, uh, oh, the only other thing I'll say about that is once you get to know people, uh, and you know what they're going through in their lives and, and what they struggle with and what they want from your class, you can get into that comfort so much easier when you're connecting because you're up there and you're seeing these faces and you know what these people are going through. So you know a little bit better what to say to connect. And you keep it general, right? You don't ever want to get spe so specific that people know who you're talking about, but you can keep it general. So if someone's going through a hard time, maybe they lost a family member and you know that they're there and they're, they're grieving, but they're there for a little bit of a release, then you can use that. And you put on a song and you say something like, you know, we're all going through something right now. We're going to take that struggle. We're going to harness it and we're going to use it. And we're going to get stronger together. Something like that. That's very general, but you are speaking to someone. And when you're able to do that, it helps you because it helps you visualize the person that you want to talk to and what you want to say to them. But it also helps you really connect. So that's all I'll say about that. A lot of I have a lot of tips for connecting. I think it's really important. So we can talk more about that if you're interested. Um, just ask questions. I'll bring it up in the future, I'm sure. Um, okay, and last thing, guys. Um, I want some feedback from you. It is the end of the year. We started this group earlier this year. It's been a long ride and I'm loving it, um, but I haven't changed too much and I wanna know if I should. So if you are listening or watching this later, I want you to do, answer two questions for me. Shoot them to me in a Facebook message or you can email info at kateherner.com. And I want you to tell me, what do you use this group for? 
Like, what do you come here for hoping to learn? Do you come here for strictly for Music Mondays? Do you come here for her in a happy hour because you want to hear what other people are talking about? Um, maybe it's just motivation, inspiration for you. Tell me, tell me what you get from this because that's important to me. Um, whatever it is that you're getting, I want to give you even more of it. So answer that. What do you get? What do you use this group for the most? And what would you like to see more of? So I'm going to guess a lot of you are going to say music because that seems to be something we all struggle with. So I want, if that's the case, I want to try and come up with a better way that we can share music. Maybe you want more just general tips. Maybe you want me coming in here more. Maybe you want to see less of me and more of other people. Maybe I can bring in some guest speakers who can talk about some specific, I don't know, issues that you, you guys can address. Um, whatever it is, whatever you want to see more of, let me know. So Two questions. Message me or email me, info at kateherner.com. Tell me, what do you use this group for the most, and what do you want to see more of? It would be so, so helpful. I would really appreciate it. And I always answer, and I always try to respond to the things that you guys want. So just remember, if you take the time to let me know, I will address it. Okay, that is all I got. Uh, we'll probably do one more Herner happy hour before the year is up. You know what? We'll probably do two, because I'll be here anyway. So... If you guys have more questions, as always, ask them either in the comments or in the group. I'll come back and answer them next week, and I will see you then for our next Turner Happy Hour. Have a great rest of your week, guys. Bye.